as you guys know, I'm a you know diehard United fan, and over the weekend, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer was sacked by United after our four-one defeat to Watford away from home. No real surprise in terms of the sacking. I think everyone kind of knew the writing was on the wall from Ole from a very long time ago. I've kind of maintained from maybe the end of the Europa League loss that he should have been sacked from there. I'm not one of these people that think that his entire reign was a complete failure. I did think in terms of just contextualizing it, in terms of being the guy that came after Jose, he was a perfect person. I think he should have probably left after the interim, if we're completely honest, because after that, apart from league positions and or apart from league positions that which some fans kind of use as a barometer of some sort of level of success um, and also maybe individual games that we won against our rivals, he didn't really do much in terms of advancing how United is maybe looked at. Um, expectation levels, maybe you can say because our league challenges, so maybe I'll give him the expectation thing. Um, transfers were pretty decent in terms of getting them kind of right, especially within that first year. But apart from that, it's all kind of fallen to pieces. And I think a, a really astute manager or somebody that actually had real understanding or self-awareness of their lack of ability to kind of close the gap, because that's the thing you have to also understand when it comes to Oli. I don't think... I don't think he believes he's lesser of a coach than the other coaches or managers out there. That's a problem I think he has. But everyone else knows that, right? Everyone else knows that he's always going to be struggling to try and finish above Klopp, Pep and Tuchel. He did finish ahead of a couple of those guys in the first season and the second season. But to continually do that, a club like Man United that are notoriously known for not backing their manager, especially after we finish, finish the top four, who don't really have any footballing, it feels like, no, that, that, we don't really have any footballing ambitions. Everything seems to be more silly commercial based and trying to look good on social media, but less so about actually winning trophies. It was always going to end this way anyway. It was never going to end with him, I think, lifting a trophy or lifting the league title. I don't think that was ever going to happen unless all those managers ended up getting sacked at the same time or, or weirdly leaving or going through a weird blipping form, similar to what Liverpool happened to him last season, whatever. Whatever, give me flowers for what he's got, but I still think I'm more astute manager. Someone with self awareness would have probably left after a Europa League loss against Villarreal and just said, you know what, I can't do this right now, so I'm going to jump off it and can it over to somebody else. And I think that would have been a perfect time to transition. And it could be argued him, he might have gone down as maybe one of the better kind of short term managers we'd had kind of post Sirs Ferguson. But I think the longer it went on, it kind of sullied reputation. And then look what happened. We're going to this season, we suffer some really embarrassing losses along the way, which I'm not going to talk about again. <laughs> And then in the end, he ends up getting sacked off the back of a Watford loss away from home, which I think wasn't even more... If you care about all these emotions and feelings, I don't think there is a more disrespectful way to go out off, than off the back of a loss away from home against Watford. He only got to say goodbye to the fans at the away end. You know, it was bittersweet. De Bruno was trying to defend him, doing that whole top red shit. But in general, the club basically hung him out to dry. And it was mostly because he, l he lacked self-preservation. He lacked an idea of trying to make himself... Like, that self-preservation maybe is a big point because there is someone who says it. I think I heard a rumour or maybe someone on social posted that supposedly the Glazers did offer to give him new coaches at the end of next, the end of the second season. But that's when he kind of echoed something he said in press conferences after the fact that he has world-class coaches with him already. So obviously he was quite loyal to the guys he has who obviously were abject. Now we have seen leaks from players talking about how the coaching wasn't good enough and Oli Solskjaer didn't know what he was doing, blah, 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 blah. But... You know, no one was saying this when he was in the job, right? Everyone was trying to pretend as if, like, we were actually being coached by, you know, coaches that were up to the standard that United need or that United um, require for this kind of part of our journey that we're on at the moment. And it's not really there at the moment. So, you know, again, good riddance. I don't care, really. The interview, I thought, after the fact was super exploitive. But again, supposedly it was his own idea. But I think the club should have had the the kind of wearable to maybe cut it before it's like crying or to maybe just you know not post it or maybe not post it for a while whatever um i think they just exploited the situation and manipulated the fan base and then as soon as that interview happened then the news gets announced i think or somewhere around the same time the news about carrick taking over as interim manager which again is clearly an attempt for them to try and replicate the same thing they did with ollie because if carrick goes on to win 10 games in a row or six games in a row as per his um as per his um license or coaching badges he has right he's only permitted to coach up until six games or something i read online i'm not sure if that's true or not people post dumb shit online all the time but if that is the case and then you can coach six matches you know what united's gonna do we're gonna let him do the six matches he's gonna win six and then suddenly now he's gonna get offered a new contract we're gonna be back to the same old circle or if their plan 
that they laid out is true. What United want to do, they want to give they want to give Carrick and McKenna and all those coaching stuff. That was the same coaching stuff we had underneath Oli, right? So the same guys that failed, the same guys who went up for the job, the same guys who are clearly average, are the same guys now in charge of taking us on in the Champions League and take us on in the league and trying to get us to finish in the last top four place, right? Whatever. But if you think about it, what the club want to do effectively is have what? Um, Solskjaer, who just got sacked, so that's one manager. Carrick and McKenna's coaching staff, that's basically one coach, right? Let's do an, another regime. Then the interim until the end of the season, another regime. And then the full-time manager. So in the process of, however, mm, I say, in the process of maybe half a year, we will have four managers at our club. Four. Okay, take out Oli and just say in a process or in a period of six months, we might have three managers at our club. Three. Three managers. What sense does that make? Why not just get Carrick or the Kenner guys to hold the fort until you find a permanent manager and then give it to the guy? Why is it got to be this coaching staff in the interim? Or take out the coaching staff and get the interim manager in now until the end of the season and then get the proper one to start of the season. But this handing over the baton a million times, this lack of organisation, and again, this is lack of organisation off at of the back of that fucking spanking that we got off Liverpool. You would have thought off the back of that result against Liverpool that maybe the owners would have thought, you know what? He's not doing a great job. He's clearly not getting the most out of the investment that we've given him. Maybe the players are down tools. I don't know, whatever you come to the conclusion of. Why don't we look at some options and just drum up a list? Because I know what ha actually happened, which is again, admirable in some regard. The club really wanted Oli to work. The top reds really wanted Oli to work. The Oli sexuals really want Oli to work. We all get it, right? And as fans of the club, I want my team to win. I don't necessarily care about the individuals. I care about the institution, as kind of Gary Neville fucking annoyingly said. But the club, for me, is more important than the players, right? As that's why I'm striving for greatness when it comes to everybody that's in the role in there. Because I want us to get back to winning trophies. I don't care who fucking manages us. But some fans have got this idea, this really nostalgic, doughy-eyed, red-tinted island is this idea especially in modern football that supposedly or that they're basically striving for some way of us to be able to get hold of a Cyrus Ferguson Mark II somebody that could stay at the club 5, 10 years 6 years um, 11 years you know long reigns of dominance and it's just not going to happen in modern day football the demands are just so high the players are on too much money the clubs invest too much money in the players for there ever to be an occasion where the Cyrus Ferguson Arsenal Wenger sort of reign can be replicated again and again and again at top clubs just not going to happen all these managers that we're seeing around are going to bounce around from club to club they're going to pick up trophies they're going to pick up league titles and it is, it's gonna, it is what it's going to be but all those fans wanted Ole to be successful and I think the club really wanted to be successful so they probably didn't want to they probably didn't want to jinx it. They just wanted to just leave it as that and say, okay, we want him to be a success. Let's give him every opportunity to do so without this kind of... Because what would have happened if they would have drummed up the list of the five potential candidates? For sure, it would have got leaked to the press, right? For sure, somebody would have not, would have alerted them. And then that would have maybe compromised or put kind of, um, you know, Oli on notice, made them worried. I don't know, whatever. Unsettled the squad, blah, 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 blah. So maybe that was a reason. But still, after after Liverpool, you have a duty of care for your business and for the club to get that list together and have someone in mind who you want to take over. Now they're talking about Pochettino taking over. I would obviously prefer Ten Hag because I just think Ten Hag, in terms of a coach, has a higher ceiling than somebody like a Pochettino. I think Poch is obviously great, but again, Poch is somebody we should have got in place maybe after Jose Mourinho, right? He's maybe someone we should have got in place maybe before Jose Mourinho, but maybe his time has gone. I don't know. Regardless, I think now a Ten Hag guy would be more appropriate, but also a Ten Hag guy, you need to also get a proper director of football. You have to have a structure in place that would allow a Ten Hag to be successful. He's been working under some of the best coaching structures that ever exist in the history of the world, right? In terms of Bayern Munich and Ajax. To him to come into United and be kind of, you know, have to re report to the likes of Darren Fletcher, John Murto, Ed Woodward or Richard Arnold, whoever fucking these knobheads are who'd have no idea about football. It's all, especially when it comes to the Ed Woodward and the Richard Arnolds and all those kind of guys. It's kind of, it's going to be a shame. And I think the club will be resistant to it, which is why they don't they didn't want to hire a guy like Conte, because he would demand a lot more of the footballing people are outside or the people that occupy those positions. So most likely they'll go for the easiest, safest choice. Somebody like a Poch who had to deal with a Daniel Levy, who is incredibly difficult to deal with by all accounts, and also somebody that doesn't really give up too much. So if that's the case and the Glazers are similar in terms of Daniel Levy, maybe they're not as brash and confrontational or just down where I, you know, liars in the way 
way that they kind of promise things to people and then turn around and, you know, renege on the promise, like what he maybe supposedly did to Harry Kane. But maybe that's what they're looking at. But that's what makes me nervous. They're too eager to get Pochettino for me. Um, that's what makes me worried. But again, Oli's gone. I don't care. Hey, Sarah, Sarah. Good riddance to, um, you know, and I think a, a pretty average coach. I think his man-managing skills are greatly over-exaggerated. He kind of left a squad full of players that all want to leave. He basically told Lingard to stay because he went in part of his plans. Never played him. His squad rotation was terrible. The harmony amongst the squad was terrible, which this is a, a good example, too, of teams that aren't really coached well when the harmony around the squad is terrible you look at the sub bench of the Liverpools of the Chelsea's and stuff when people score or they go through now, they're actually legitimately happy you pan over to our sub bench people are dour they're pissed off they're annoyed because there's no real kind of um there's no consequences in our team when it comes to Oli and his previous coaching stuff. Like you have seven bad games that you're one of the favourites or one of the ones that you trust you're never going to get dropped so because of that I don't really have any sympathy for him. I think we need to separate him from the player and him as the manager. I don't care about the person because I don't know the guy. But the player I always love. The player always special, holds a special place in my heart. But the coach, I'm ready to kind of remove it and kind of get on to newer and better things, man. Because that was pretty much one of the most terriblest, I think. Um, it was just a terrible tenure, man. It really was. Average football, um, bleeding through the eyes. Top red fans trying to convince you that what you're seeing isn't what you're seeing. Like, sometimes... During that first year, honestly, man, it was so toxic. Like, so toxic to the point of, like, I was on this really popular Man United forum that I got banned off of because I was, you know, basically saying he wasn't up for the job. I was saying, like, what are these guys doing in training? This is awful. We don't have any style of play. Where are our systems? Why have we signed all these players? We don't know how to use them. Like, all these things that are barely obvious at the moment, people are calling me out for and saying, oh, you're not there on a training ground. What do you know? You live in London. Ah. And now, look, the leaks come out and they've all, we've all been proven right. And no one went to be proven right. I don't want to turn around and say, ha ha, I told you so but it was blatantly obvious that we weren't up to par and again it's not Oli's fault maybe in 90 maybe in the 90s in the early 2000s he might have been a success with the way he manages and the way he kind of corrals players and the way he puts his teams out but nowadays with the level of coaching available now with the level of investment the clubs have with their structures with the youth systems available you just can't get away with a guy that's just going to be what uh, a figurehead a kind of cult figure a legend figure to be in a dugout with no real you know tactical you know system acumen whatever it may be no idea to kind of identify players all that sort of shit that's going to make the system well i don't know all that shit you can't get away with nowadays you, you need somebody really top draw to kind of um try to uh close the gap between some of the bigger teams up there or some of the more successful teams in the league especially in the league anyway but you know what do i know